Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Let's Grow. Super excited because we have an amazing guest here today uh, that is going to share a lot of value on how to grow followings and audiences. But before we dive into that, uh, make sure that you subscribe and leave some comments and some reviews. Let us know if you're enjoying these episodes or let us know if you hate them and don't want to do them anymore. We'd love that feedback too. Uh, but today we have Katya and I am super excited to talk with Katya because she's an artist and a content creator that has successfully built huge followings and audiences, uh, just surpassing 10 million across Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and Spotify. So she knows how to create engagement, attention, and really leverage content. And today we're going to go over how she's done that, how she's built that following, that audience as an artist, one in the content creator space and two in the music space, and then how she comes up with all of these ideas to keep that content train going. So Katya, thank you so much for joining. Cheers, mate. How are you doing? <laughs> Very good. Good to be Strong here. with the accent. <laughs> yeah, I know. I love it. I'm like, as soon as I hear more accents, I'm like, yes, everyone's accents. I want to hear it. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think you're also in LA. So I moved to LA maybe yep. seven years ago, I think. Yep, yep. I, yeah, probably about the same. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love it here. I love the weather. It's like, it's hotter. Oh, in, yeah. In it's Melbourne. super, That's super cool. relaxed. Melbourne's yeah, like was... Seattle. It's like rainy and stuff. Yeah, I go back every now and again. I haven't been for a while, but, uh, but yeah, I always do. I do forget how bad the winters are <laughs> in Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Are you from <laughs> Melbourne or Sydney? I was born in Sydney and then grew up in Melbourne mostly. Oh, there you um, go. Yeah, you know. So a little bit of both. Yeah, yeah you know. You're from <laughs> you Melbourne though. Yeah. yeah, I'm a Melbourne, a Melbourne girl. No humidity nice. for me, thank you. Yuck. Uh, well, yeah, you've got the dry heat in California, that's for sure. Yeah, exactly. But, um, but yeah, to jump into this, I love starting out with uh, asking every guest, you know, what's your elevator pitch? What's the one to two sentences you tell someone when you meet them at a bar or at a conference or in, when you're introducing yourself? What are the one to two sentences you say to kind of get them interested and to introduce yourself? Oh, I don't introduce myself anyway. <laughs> I'm like the person in the corner that's like. Uh... Stay away. <laughs> I don't know how to talk to people. <laughs> um, but yeah, if like, yeah, usually when I'm out and meeting people, I just say, hey, g'day. I don't know. I don't have lines. <laughs> don't even say what you do. You're just like, g'day. <laughs> I, don't, I actually don't. I really don't. I'm just like, if people are like, what do you do? I've seen you somewhere. I'm like, nah. <laughs> no, All right, bye. Me. I'm going back to my corner. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go back to my corner. Um, I think, I think if, I think sort of like if, if anyone sort of gets confused as to what I do, I'm like, imagine the sort of old Hollywood vaudeville music theater actor singer dancers that do like comedy and music and all that kind of stuff, um, but then digitally instead. Mm. It's kind of like yeah, no, you're very. I feel like nothing's changed in the entertainment industry, just distribution. Yeah, which is yeah. probably a good thing. But what I did see is like a lot of your content, you do change roles like a yeah. lot. So you go from like super professional music artist video to like comedy sketches on TikTok sort of thing. Yeah. So you do have quite a wide wide range of content that you create. How did you sort of get started and where did you get started with your content? So what was the idea when you first started? Are you producing music or producing social media content? Um, I think I feel like when I was a kid, I pretty much was producing it without filming it. Like I would I I'm always the person that's um putting on a show when I'm with my friends or I have some kind of sarcastic joke or comment or I imitate people. So it sort of just stems from that, like my personality, um, what it's like to be a friend of mine, <laughs> um, what it's like to hang out with me. Um, and it's kind of how I express myself um, and sort of like, I don't know, trends or what's going on in the world. I sort of put it all through um, content and sort of comedy and music. I don't know. I just It's how I deal with life <laughs> and people want to see it. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's a space for everything now. But um, yeah, exactly. which do you prefer doing, the comedy stuff or the, the more serious stuff? It. 
all of it. Mm. I just, I feel like, um, I, I personally feel that my purpose is, is to be a healer. And I think that one of the greatest ways, um, to head towards a path of healing is through laughter, um, and Mm -hmm. music and movement. Um, so yeah, I just, I kind of just resonate in the entertainment performing arts industry, but I sort of see myself as a bit of a spiritual, emotional healer, if that makes nice. sense. Because then, then if no, you sort of go, it oh, does. that's kind of where I'm coming from, then everything I do makes sense. Yeah. And then the other thing I was going to ask, because I was kind of curious about this, like does it overlap the people who are following you for your music versus the people who are following you for your comedy sketches and the more humorous stuff that you do? Does that audience overlap? Do you find it? those like your super engaged fans buying albums or buying from yeah. uh, Spotify, are they the same people that are following on TikTok? Yeah, the, the core people that are there that become your family, like your social media family, um, they're the ones that are there through thick and thin. They're the ones that um, understand if you need to take a break or anything like that. Like they're the ones that really get to know you they're the ones that you look out for to let in a little bit more because it can be a little bit scary putting yourself out there online because there's so many people that want to hate um and there's also you know there's a certain audience that don't want to hear my music and just want me to shut up and look pretty as sometimes they try to say to me or they don't want to hear my opinion on things um but that's fine triggering people's emotions is a is a path to healing as well. So whatever. <laughs> no, I love the Yeah, I can't Yeah, no, I love the whiff of it. But yeah, I, I tend to focus on my social media tribe and family who are like they're like me. They're they're that person that won't go up to someone in a bar or like talk to themselves. They're just kind of like reserved until you get to know them. And then they have big personalities. Yeah, like, I guess like those people. <laughs> Jack in the box, unexpecting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People, people that you know need to trust you first, and kind of, and then you sort of see their personalities. Yeah, yeah. that's what I am, and those nice. are the kinds of people that I attract. And your vibe attracts your tribe. Yeah, no, it's true. And then, I suppose you said you kind of started when you were a kid doing this sort of thing. But yeah. when did you first start seeing success with? content online like was there a certain video or a certain thing that you did that you started seeing like hey there's a lot of people watching this or following this well the yeah the first one the project that I was involved with was the princess rap battle so that one did insane like I I was like I was just like actress going into castings and singer trying to get signed I was like I was I was on that path of of resistance like a lot of artists are which is like well if I'm good enough or if I can prove myself to be good enough I won't have to let people into my life or create content um you know that kind of stuff like you just sort of feel if I'm good enough the kind of stuff which is stupid it's like you by being vulnerable by being open by making content that resonates with you by having your own kind of perspective on trends or dances or anything Um, and sharing that perspective with people is connecting like that's the point of social media so um, so I had to get over myself and just put it out there and just just be a little bit brave and um, I was inspired because I saw that you know the princess rap battle did really well and a lot of people were sort of reaching out online and I was like oh okay People don't hate you immediately. Like there's actually nice people online. So, yeah, for me it was like a, I was kind of thrust into the world by being cast in something that was, that had digital success. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just started to slowly dip my toes into it. But I, I did sort of feel like I was kind of thrown in headfirst because I am a very sensitive, reserved, introverted person. So, yeah, it was. No, I think it's. I think it's good getting thrown in head first. <laughs> yeah, it, and it kind of makes you feel like, oh, it's not that bad. I am that kind of person that like, you know, if I was to go bungee jumping or something, I'd need that friend to just push yeah, me give me a nudge. Because I would do it. <laughs> okay, so for the listeners who don't know or haven't checked out Princess Rap Battles, 
what is Princess Rap Battles? And then you talk in terms of like projects. So what are these yeah. types of projects that these content creators are, are picking up? Because I know there's a lot more information on what a project is and yeah. how you get assigned to partake in projects. But what was Princess Rap Battles? And then what sort of projects are you currently doing? So this was your first successful one. Which ones are you doing now? Yeah. So the, the Princess Rap Battle was a channel back in the day on YouTube um, and I was a part of the first viral project. So I think there was Epic Rap Battles of History that was doing really well um, and then Whitney Avalon had the idea of oh, I'm going to do the princess version of them and I got cast as Elsa because I sing and, and do comedy stuff um, and kind of look like her as well. Um, and little did she know that I was actually Australian. So <laughs> a lot of people didn't know that I was Australian. If you listen to it, it's very American. Um, yeah, so then that for some reason, every now and then videos just somehow get to go viral. It's very rare. <laughs> if it's not paid for or have a huge um, PR thing behind it, um, yeah, it just happened to go super viral. And that was on YouTube. So mm. I, um, I started just kind of dipping my toes into making content sort of in my own way. Um, and I sort mm. of developed a bit of a style in comedy and um, mixing up kind of dance trends with comedy as well as the trends changed. So, yeah, it's all about staying fresh, up to date, um, being able to kind of have your perspective and then also learn to let go of your ego because not mm. all things are going to go your way in the social media world. You have to keep trying and failing. I failed many times. I cry over it all the time and then I get over myself again and you keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that is a good point. So you start out on YouTube and then yeah. for other content creators being like, okay, I'm just getting started. How do I get involved in a YouTube series or a new channel launch or something like that? Um, how do you usually go about getting cast for these types of things? So they do the outreach, do you apply? How do you, as a YouTuber, how do you kind of get started yeah. with these collaboration projects? Um, I think in, in my circumstance, I was cast through a manager, um, but that's because I did the work to have headshots and go for managers and I did the whole going to acting school and doing workshops. So there's there's that path. Um, but there's people DM me and we end up collaborating. So there's there's many paths you can take to working with people. You've just got to um, you got to get over that one little thing that I keep saying, which is like that jump, just jump. Just send that message. Um, and if you don't get cast in something, I don't get cast in so many things all the time. You've got to just keep going um, and keep making stuff on your own as well. So I know that when I look to collaborate with people, I don't necessarily look at their numbers. I look at their, their style, their personality, their work ethic. Um, I'm like, are they someone that actually wants to contribute to the community and make funny videos or do they are they just going to stand there and expect me to order them around or something because that's not how I like to do it like I like to work together and co cooperate and have fun um so yeah I like to see people that are just being proactive and not caring about the numbers like just just doing videos when you can as well like not every single day go crazy you don't have to do that just if you've got a good idea and you think it's pretty funny or you think you'll look really good doing this or you've got a good perspective on something, make it. And you never know who's who's going to see it or how you'll grow from making that as well. Like it's better to do something than not do it at all. <laughs> it's true. Get your foot in yeah. the door. And, uh, and yes, because I know the, you know, the big trending thing happening now is, you know, these content creator houses like Hype House and all these other things. Careful. Um, <laughs> Be careful. Which, be careful of contracts. I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> those people that put people in houses yeah. um, to create content. So essentially, um, you know, do you think those are a good idea, bad idea? Like how important has partnerships and collaboration been for growing your, you know, audience? Um, 
I definitely think that collaborating does help in terms of certain algorithms like to pick up groups because it's just, it's more fun for the app. It's more fun for users to see groups of people together. Um, And the more real that is rather than fake and put together, people prefer because yeah, uh, content houses can be great, but um, as we've seen in reality, for people personally in terms of legal things and um, money being stolen supposedly from other people. Um, yeah, it's sometimes it's just not worth the real world issues that come with it. Mm. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. I, so your advice, yeah. So your advice to kind of people starting out in content creation is more so find people that you vibe really well with. Yeah. Um, Some don't think about the numbers. Drama. Then create good content. Mm. Content creation is drama. And even though that's not what I personally want to do, it is very effective. So a lot of people love, you know, being the center of attention and being extroverted and making up realities that necessarily don't exist to get views and stuff. But that's a form of entertainment too. So if that's what people want to do, that's that's great too. It's just um, I think there's some really sensitive artists that feel like that's the only way to get views or that's the only way to sort of be seen. Um, And I've seen both sides of it all. I've seen people shoot up into the stratosphere, into great huge virality and then crash and burn. Um, And some people handle it well, some people don't. So you've just really got to know yourself. Know what, yeah, like know you, know what your morals are, know what your ethics are. If you're willing to do what you can to get what you want, then go ahead and go for it. But if you're like, if you're not that person, there's plenty of ways to get views, to grow a business, to, um, to make it happen. You've just got to think about it. <laughs> you just got to really think about it. Yeah. And so my next question is kind of tying a little bit more into the music side of things. Um, yeah. So, you know, obviously being an artist, it's super important to create good music, but it's even more important almost now to get the distribution and the listeners and kind of like the reach to yeah. then get the popularity to then have better op- options to negotiate with maybe people who are looking to sign you and those sorts of things. Yeah. How big an impact is your social media following on your music career? And what's been the pros of investing a ton of time into the content creation uh, and return on your music career? Um, I think that in terms of if you can invest as much time as possible into your community um, and get them engaged with you and have a consistent dialogue and have them behind you, it's it's like learning, it's like being a leader. You're, you need to learn how to be a good leader. Um, and the challenges are personal things like feeling like you're failing when you need to push yourself harder or um, feeling isolated like you don't have a team because it is really hard to build it so getting as much um, support like personally is like really important because you do just need to find ways to get to do the work and to keep working because it's true consistency and work will always yield results. Um, so, yeah, it's about pacing yourself and being true to yourself and trying to bring friends or family in, doing the best you can with what resources you have. Don't get caught up in comparisons because everyone's situation is different. Um, yeah, it's just about finding ways to keeping yourself on track. Um, and being consistent and then taking breaks when you need to um, and being open with your audience. That's why it's easier just to be yourself because you don't have to keep up with certain lies or personality traits or drama storylines or anything like that. You can just focus on people and growth. Yeah, much more simplified. And then so for those who are looking to get into the music industry or maybe they want to be not necessarily a singer but just involved in that music industry somehow, yeah. what would be your advice going into it if you were starting again right now? Um, how would you go about it now knowing everything you know? Ooh. 
if I knew then what I know now, um, I would put less faith in what people tell me they're going to do for me if I do certain things for them first. I would I would put more faith in the things that I can actually achieve and make happen um, by me motivating people and leading people and leading my team or leading my fans. Um, yeah, we, we really, really have been conditioned to think that someone is going to come and make it all better for us. <laughs> um, and, and that even if that did happen, nothing's free. <laughs> um, and you, yeah, people, people will always learn that nothing's free. It's always, it always comes back to you. Like I've learned fundamental music things. I could, if someone really wanted me to, I could produce a track. I don't, I hate having to do it because it's like me and technical mumbo jumbo, but you need to be willing to do every single step by yourself. And if you expect that someone's going to come along and pay for it or hand it to you, then maybe you're lucky to be born into a privilege or maybe you so happen to get into a great situation. But um, at the grassroots of it, even those people find out at the end of the day that nothing satisfactory comes from that. Like you just need to, you need to develop that foundation yourself. So yeah, I don't have any answers to help quick fix that because I know that that's what a lot of people we're always we always want that quick fix answer that means someone's if I do that someone's going to come and save us no mm. sorry so just okay so yourself. it's a marathon it's not a sprint okay so learn a little bit about everything expect yeah. nothing from yeah. others and then you know, try to do it yourself first. And then once you've sort of done that, then start getting people to help you after yeah, you've you kind of delegate. got the foundation. Then you, can, then you can have people, you know how they always say, surround yourself with people that are better than you. It's like, yeah, then you can mm. get people that are better than you because you'll know what your limits are in that particular mm -hmm. part of what you do. Yeah. Got it. And then when you come out with new songs, uh, whether it's singles or albums or whatever it may be, how do you usually go about promoting it? How do you get, you know, the thousands of listeners um, to these new new drops? Um, it's it's different for everything. Um, yeah, it depends. If you have a budget, you can go into playlists and try and um, get pictures to get your songs on playlists. Apparently, for Spotify, that is that is probably the the best, most consistent way to keep generating money and gaining fans is to try and get on playlists. Um, Spotify also prefers consistency. So if you do have the skills or can develop the skills to produce yourself or have access to music as much as possible, then the more consistent you'll put stuff out, the more the algorithm will encourage you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, with music, if you can have a budget for playlistings, I think that's probably one of the best things. And then creating your own content, thinking about pieces of your lyrics that could be reinterpreted in a different way that's funny. You know, like I have, I have like, I mean, for one of my songs, I have a dirty joke in my head, which I haven't filmed because I'm like, oh, it's, it's too far. But <laughs> like the lyrics, I've never seen your face before, but I know it. I'm like, that could be a pretty dirty joke. Um, yeah, so there's, there's kind of like those kinds of things. What, what sort of lyrics in your song or is there a drop in your music? Um, you can also try and tailor your beat or tempo to certain playlists. So if you want to get on reggaeton playlists, then you obviously try to make music that's in that genre. So you can also construct music in ways algorithmically that it'll hear it and start putting it in that category too. This is there's so many different ways. Yeah, it's crazy. You can you could come up with a hilarious, amazing trend and it just goes viral naturally. Or some people spend hundreds of thousands of dollars with TikTok to have a hashtag. Mm. Yeah, because is that gonna I help did notice you? probably not. <laughs> Because I did notice with 
uh, a lot of your content, you do overlay your music on it. Have you experimented yeah. with like creating a TikTok dance or anything like that? And how kind of married the two, like music and visual to then make your own sort of TikTok trend or own TikTok dance? Yeah, yeah. I think there was um, there there was a TikTok dance for a song that I did called Picky. I did one a few years ago for another one of my songs. It just depends on the genre as well. So certain mm. certain songs have certain movements or a subject matter that make people want to replicate it. So yeah, when thinking about making your videos, if you want it, if you want people to like use the sound as well, yeah. Mm. Um, okay, you definitely think about what you're making. And I've frozen. <laughs> I seem to no, have frozen going... on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're going in and out. We'll we'll record the whole thing, don't you worry. Oh, cool. Um, and then, yeah, so out of all the music uh, that you've created, what's been the most successful and why do you think that one worked the best? Yeah, um, definitely I did a song called Come Through a few years ago. Um, and that was featuring King Batch. So at the time there was um, a big push and sort of social media um, push around the video because it was a narrative to do with the Team 10 situation. I can be found in the video somewhere, but um, my song was attached kind of to that storyline and that narrative. So that song did the best out of all of them because it was attached to a narrative that was very trending at the time, like a romantic narrative um, with a lot of social media people. Uh, so that is not probably, it's probably not the easiest thing to replicate, but like I said, every song is different and there's different ways that it could go viral. Um, I know the music artist that has the song De Nero, um, and that song was written four or five years ago and released years ago, but it just suddenly trended and seemed conversational. It was really cool to be able to make a video um, that's relatable to people in relationships of, yeah, my girl takes all my money and people just, people just want to replicate it because it's relatable. Mm, okay. And then so... A lot of it probably comes down to, yeah, jumping on trends and then those collaborations really. Um, how do you – so I know you've done a few different projects on YouTube. How do you yeah. sort of come up with the ideas to create these projects? Because I know you've got like a lot of different playlists and you've got a few different channels. Yeah. How do you come up with the ideas? Like how do you think, oh, this is a series that people would be interested in? Uh, I just sort of – I think with – the longer narrative, I've always kind of tried something on TikTok like that's smaller, like a shorter version of it, um, like a few second sketch, and then it's just kind of about building it to be longer and longer. Um, that's kind of when I've been inspired to make a, like a series or a narrative longer is when people are responding it, to it really well. So they, I know that they liked um, the Barbie series, uh, because I don't know, I guess it's just silly to imagine a Barbie coming to life. Um, and it's, it was just funny and silly. So yeah, I kind of. So did of, that start on TikTok or did that start yeah, on YouTube? Yeah. I, I just try different things and see what works. And then if something's working, I'll try to, um, make more of it or I'll try to mm. extend it out longer. Uh, and then I move on and then I move on to something else. Right. I get bored. I get bored so easily. <laughs> So I know you have a production YouTube channel and a music YouTube channel. Do you yeah. purposely kind of like try and separate those two out? Yeah, it, it was getting confusing, I think, because the production channel kind of just follows whatever I'm doing. Sometimes it's vlogs, sometimes it's sketches, sometimes it's a YouTube type video, um, sometimes it's gaming but then music, mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that if people want to get the songs or the lyric videos, that it's just mm -hmm. easy and accessible and the music's just right there. Mm. Okay. Because yeah, otherwise it gets messy. <laughs> yeah. No, I totally agree. And it's super smart separating it out. Um, but 
uh, for TikTok, I think that's where you've got a huge amount of following. Um, are there any tips that you would give to people sort of just getting started with TikTok? Like I know it's still pretty early days with TikTok, but is there any yeah. sort of things that you've learned while you've been creating content for TikTok that's been like, yeah, this works really, really well, or I keep doing this because it's working and those videos that I do it in get a lot of views and engagement? Yeah. Um, algorithmically, it's always best to use a trending sound. Um, most of the time, if you can understand it on a business level, the label has paid for that song to be pushed. So you're kind of getting on the back end of a label that has paid for that song to be pushed. So you're, you're being smart by, you know, jump riding on the coattails of someone else's money. (laughs) That's kind of what, you know, jumping on a trend is, but that is what you want, they want you to do. So, um, yeah. And then it's not just doing that. It's finding a way to, stand out in that trend how it like how how do you want to stand out do you want to be a style icon a makeup artist person do you want to be a fitness looking person do you want to be funny do you want to um be seen as a singer maybe you want to like jump on the trend and sing on top of it or something like it's sort of jump on a trend or something else that someone else has paid for Mm -hmm. and try to sort of stand out that way I think that's probably that's probably the easiest way in in okay, your so, most authentic, relatable way, so that you can yeah. replicate it every time. Because mm. it's going to be you and you <laughs> in your head, so you got to be able to keep doing it. Okay, so essentially, jump onto either a dance trend or a video trend or a, or yeah. a music trend. Really, like leverage what's already working. Yeah, leverage definitely, definitely. Okay, and then. Same thing for YouTube. I know YouTube is kind of way more like SEO long-term focused because I, like, you know, a video on TikTok is gone within like 20 minutes, whereas yeah. YouTube seems to have a much longer shelf life. Um, anything that you've learned over the years of creating YouTube content that you're like, yep, these are some great things to remember when I'm creating YouTube content. Um, don't make something that you wouldn't want to watch. I think I think a lot of people sort of don't think about that. They just want to put their creations on the world. And I'm like, yeah, but would you actually enjoy that? Did you in- is or is that or is that helpful? Like I I always go to YouTube for information. Like I always want to like that that's kind of why I go. So it's it's sort of more about that. Like think about Do you go to YouTube for that kind of thing? Is there people going there for that kind of content? Because maybe it's not your content that's bad. Maybe people just aren't there looking for that content. And there's not, you know what I mean? Like it's, that's just, that's just life. You can't control that. So yeah, just, just be logical rather than personal about it. Just because it's your personal business. So you can't help it. Your face, your body, your voice, your perspective. I get it. It's yeah. It's scary. Got it. And then do you put much work and thought into like the SEO side of it, like the title, the description and like, you know, how long the intro should be and all that sort of stuff? Or you just have a vision and you're like, I think this will be good content and then go and create that and release it and see what happens? Um, it, it depends. If, it, if I have like a, sometimes I have a really strong desire to make it a specific way um, and other times I workshop it. So but I do try to take the time to think those things. Like what, what's the title? Is that interesting? Is it going to give people the wrong idea? Is that what I want to do? Yeah. Just, just before you post it, go, hang on a minute. Is this all right? And yeah, just, just double check your work and put it out. And you know what? If it's bad, just delete it and re-edit it and put it up again. Who cares? Who cares? No, one will know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's all about learning and getting it right. Don't yeah. yeah. Or or let it go and just wait till the next video comes around. Yeah, um, and yeah don't dwell. Yeah, don't dwell about it. Yeah. Just give yourself a few minutes. If it doesn't come to you, don't beat yourself up. <laughs> yeah. And then <laughs> no, that's a good point. But um the other thing is, are there any YouTubers that you love to follow yourself? Like you're like, hey, I love these guys' content. It's so good. Um any that you like to follow yourself? Who's my go-to YouTubers? I usually now go to YouTube for meditation music. 
<laughs> I'm like, why is this so calm up? Um, and binaural beats. I don't know. I just love it because it helps me get to sleep at night. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of what I've been looking at. I I always loved like I always loved the music channels. I always loved like Sean Mendes. I thought he was great mm. <laughs> when I was growing up. Um, yeah, nowadays, I've never even watched Sean Mendes' channel. Yeah, so I don't think I don't think he makes content anymore. Some people don't have to. <laughs> Some people don't no, have to. No, no, no. And that's fine for them. That's that's what it is for them. The rest of us, though, it's actually the more you can connect with your audience and by making that content, you'll find the better you feel as well. You feel like you're in control, you're being productive. Um, yeah. But I don't know. I, just, I don't really watch much YouTube. <laughs> I don't you're watch too busy YouTube. creating content. <laughs> Yeah, I'm too busy in my own head, like trying to, yeah, because because I do try to do it all. I want to make music, and then I want to do things that are funny, and um, yeah. So other than the trying to get to sleep at night, I, I don't think. I, oh, what do I love? I love like Screen Rant. Um, yeah, I love Honest Trailers. Honest Trailers is great. Like common the, the people that commentate. See, that's really funny. You think about honest trailers, someone else has put multi millions of dollars into making a film, and all they do is pretty much watch it and make a funny commentary. So they're riding on the coattails of someone else. But yeah, so, and then it's in the algorithm and they're, they're helping themselves out. And I love the channel. So, gotta think, yeah, work smart. If that's what you wanna do. I just, I just, I, that, that is hilarious. Like bad lip reading, that is a great channel. And no, no particular person or face is attached to those channels. It's not about anyone's ego. They just completely serve people and comedy. I love it. Yeah. No, it is true. And yeah, the reaction videos are huge. I think, yeah. you know, when we talk to a few different creators, they usually have like buckets of what they want to kind of create because it is hard to continually create new interesting content so sometimes when they create buckets of like reaction videos storyline videos review videos or whatever their buckets are sometimes it gives them a little bit more direction on what to make and when because you yeah. create so much content how do you keep coming up with ideas for content i am a crazy person so <laughs> that's <laughs> like i i i i rem yeah, I'm a crazy person. I just, I love making up crazy, hilarious stories. I think for, for me personally, I love reinterpreting the world in a more funny way because I've seen it be very dark and bleak. So my perspective on things is just to turn it around and make it funny. Um, so, yeah, that's just kind of me. That's from growing up with traumas and stuff. <laughs> yeah, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so it's just, it's like, it, yeah, if people hang out with me, that's all I do is, so I'm pretty. Okay, so you don't have a specific process to like be like, all right, I'm going to plan out all this. I'm going to create these like genres, I suppose. You're just like, all right, this seems like a good idea. Let's go and do it. Yeah, or or I see something like I'm inspired by something that happens and I see the truth of it and kind of want to laugh about it and go, oh, okay, you know, that kind of stuff. Or I hear a song, um, you know, like the the – Megan these stallion songs that were really big that were coming out with yeah. the body stuff. I don't know. You, you just kind of can think of like these songs have lyrics that are quite dirty and I'm like, how could I make them maybe not as dirty and just funny and, and silly? that's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Like that kind of stuff as well. Like people love that. Yeah. So that's almost like one of your genres really misinterpreting like yeah, or just, reinterpreting. Not, I suppose not misinterpreting reinterpreting reality i'm a filter of reality <laughs> through a humorous filter that's what i am <laughs> there you go that's your that's your introduction line <laughs> <laughs> hello i'm a humorous filter what are you <laughs> no that's great and then um last question before we wrap it up and everything so you have this big 
a uh, big audience. And so how do you go about sort of monetizing this, like turning this into a business? Um, yep. You obviously have your music side of things. You have your social followers side of things and content creation. How do you turn this into a business that kind of generates revenue for you to keep reinvesting and keep producing content and songs and all that sort of fun stuff? Yeah. Um, so if you do have a following or, you know, if you're a content creator that's consistently making content, um, I know plenty of brands are now looking for micro influencers most of the time. Um, the, the first and foremost important thing is when you're making content, you start to get out there, um, brands will come to you. They just do. They're always looking for people that are consistently engaging with people, social media and making content. Um, I choose to make my content primarily on a professional camera um, because when brands come to me, I want to be able to make from like a phone type video to a full scale ad production. Um, that's just, that's my background. I've done acting and film work. Um, so I'm able to offer that service to certain brands. Um, and I've personally been able to even work with companies outside of my own, um, channels because they've found me and they've wanted me to make their ads and produce their ads for YouTube ads or to go wherever else. Um, so you just don't know what's going to happen. So I, I tend to always be prepared. I always make sure that I put brand awareness first. Um, and I always make the brand the hero of the story. That's the, yeah. If you want to be brand friendly, just make the brand the hero of the story, whichever story it is that you're telling, however you're telling it. Um, if your, your skin is bad, you've got to, this product is the hero of the story. Um, just be careful and be as um, authentic as possible because if you do anything that's outside of your branding, your fans will call you out. <laughs> <laughs> keep you in check. <laughs> yeah, they'll keep you in check. Sometimes they don't yeah. understand that you have to eat. <laughs> <laughs> No, it is true. And it's a, it's a big challenge that I think a lot of content creators have. It's just like, you know, I'm creating all this content, but, you know, I still need to, you know, make a business out of this and generate revenue. Yeah. And so, yes, you don't want to obviously sell out to brands that don't match your style. But at the same time, you still need to, you know, monetize yeah. what you're doing some way, somehow. So, you know, exactly. it sounds like you do it in terms of brand partnerships, brand content yeah. creation, that sort of thing. Um, you know, the other way people have seen doing it, they're doing like, you know, the Patreons and the paid memberships and that sort of stuff. There's that too. Um, yeah. That's so, I you know, there's a lot I, of different ways to go about it. Because I personally, um, want to call upon my fans to watch my music videos and listen to my music. I, I've always steered clear of like getting them to pay me and like trying to get them to buy my merch and stuff all the time because, you know, my, my fans, I don't, I'm not, I'm not here to drain money out of like people. <laughs> uh, like that's why, you know, working with brands is, is obviously a, a good way to get money and get your face out there and that kind of stuff. It's a, a company that's paying you, not individual people. And then your individual fans have resources to, um, to be streaming your music. Um, they can save up money if they want to see you live and you're not consistently draining them of money every month. Um, if if you have other things that you want them to do, like if if you just need a subscription and you're consistently making content, that's another business model. Um, but yeah, I just I always make sure that you know I'm not trying to get too much out of my fans because then you might lose them. Like you don't want to. Yeah, you want to be making sure that you're giving as much as they're giving back to you. Mm. No, it's true. And, you know, attention and engagement is a huge thing for a lot of people to give. Yeah. It's um, super important. But I know we've gone a little bit over, but Katya, yeah. definitely let us know uh, where we can find you, where you want people to go to start watching some of this amazing content, start seeing what you do on the day to day. Give us some locations to go find all this stuff. All right. Well, I'm always on, um, now TikTok has stories, which is great, um, but there's Instagram and Snapchat. 
and TikTok and Spotify and YouTube and it's all Carty Gleason. So um, as soon as you know how to spell my name, Carty Gleason, um, yeah, you you can find me or at least, you know, type out the first name. I should come. You should find me down there. It is, it is a unique name, which is good. Having a yeah, unique name like, is actually super valuable now. <laughs> yeah, right. I, well, my last name is actually none of my parents' names. They made it up for the kids. I, nice. Yeah. There was a lot of racism apparently when my old, yeah. when my older siblings were growing up. So when I was a baby, mm. they changed um, everyone's last names. Um, so oh, no one had Gleason spelt with an I-E in the world. Uh, it's crazy. Wow. I'm sure traveling with your parents was a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> None of your names matched up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. And then, yeah, half, half of the people were born with a different birth certificate and different names and no one knows what their names are. <laughs> Well, we'll link to all of this so people don't have to uh, don't have to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, but yeah, I just kind of I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere and I, I'm nowhere. Yeah, in the corner, a bit of every room. <laughs> I'm in the corner. I'm actually in the corner of your room right now. You just can't see. <laughs> I'm watching you. Yeah. Well. I've got a few. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in this room, so maybe. I love all the plants. <laughs> Obsessed. They're all fake, so. Uh, yeah, I was. I was. I didn't want to ask though. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm straight up about it. There's no lies here. <laughs> it's good. I mean, you need a set. You need a set. <laughs> yeah, it also makes you happier. I think when you walk into your room and there's some green things in there instead of just white walls. Yeah, it's. it's uh, just, it looks nice. Makes it feel. Makes you feel better. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Um, okay. Well, Katya, thank you so much for joining. Um, thank you for having me. I know me. we went over a bunch of stuff. Oh, of course. I know, it was well, I know all my, my pleasure. My path and my explanations of things are all a little messier, but some of us are a little messier. Some of us are messy, crazy, introverted artists, and we can we can have a business too. Of course. There's business for everybody. And then exactly. the other thing is exactly. we'll, uh, we can always put some dot points at the bottom too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much and thank you everybody so listening. Much. <laughs> um, and for everybody yeah, listening. When it's all ready and stuff, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, will do. Hey guys, we put a bunch of effort into making great content for this YouTube channel. So please hit subscribe, uh, leave us a comment, hit like, and tell a few friends about it.